Welcome to Down the Forest Path, a seasonal knitting podcast. Since this is the first episode of this podcast, I feel like I owe you a bit of an introduction and first of all, a thank you for taking a chance on me. So my name is Nicola, I will be the host of this podcast and I live in Germany with my spouse. I've been knitting for the last almost two years, I think it was um, December 2020 or something like that, that I restarted. I originally learned how to knit when I was a child, my grandmother taught me and we even got to like cables, I made rugs for my dollhouse, things like that. But she also taught me crochet and bead looming and since they tend to produce quicker results as a child that was far more interesting for me. So I kind of got stuck on that and I have been on a, I can actually say decades, that's scary. I've been on a decades long knitting hiatus until 2020 when I picked it back up. Why did I start knitting again? Well, first of all, as you know, there was the pandemic, everyone was stuck indoors, so it was a nice time to revisit old hobbies um, but on top of that also my grandmother couldn't knit anymore because she developed dementia um, and since she was being moved to a care home her old knitting needles were in danger of being thrown away so I said oh I'll, I'll take them well what I didn't really think about is that if I would have them at home, I would also feel like I had to use them, right? So I um, did that and, and I started with some some knitted wrist warmers for, for her, actually, um, which were basically just rectangles seamed together at the side with a hole for the thumb left open. I think I have a picture somewhere. Let me see if I can put it somewhere for you. And if you pay close attention, you will see that um, every second row of st stitches is twisted. I fixed that since then. But here's the headband that I made. That was my second project. You can see it has this little cable detail. It was from a, a YouTube tutorial and um, in the back it has a seam so it's 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 knit flat and then seamed in the back and as you might also be able to tell there are some mistakes but all in all I'm quite proud of it still because that was only my second thing that I made it's a completely wearable piece of clothing and I'm actually quite chill about my knitwear um so I'm not a perfectionist. I will sometimes rip back if I feel like something is really going to impact either the function or my enjoyment of, a, of an item I've knit. So I will rip back for, let's say, like, yeah, holes. No, not happening. Or something that is blindingly obvious, like the, the mistakes in the cables here. I would nowadays probably just rip back a few rows, but back then I didn't know how to do it. So that's why I didn't want to risk it. Um, but all in all, um, I'm quite, quite chill because it's my hobby. It's supposed to be relaxing for me. Um, I always admire people who are more perfectionist with their items. But yeah, if you really hate seeing any mistakes in knitting, then maybe... Um, maybe that's not the podcast for you i hope you stay of course but 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 i can't promise that um that the things that i show you will always be perfect anyway so that was item number two and shortly after that because i'm also a bit of a history geek i heard about this thing called thrumped mittens so because my spouse always has really cold hands in winter, I thought I would make a pair of thrumped mittens for him. And they are here. And as you can see, 
I ran out of my yarn on the second mitten here. Um, so yeah, it's, it's two different colors, but I don't mind that. That's a functional piece of clothing. It doesn't need to be pretty. And it is actually quite functional. It's super toasty. And I think they're actually quite cute as well. So there you go. That was warm enough for, for a very cold German winter, unless it was super, super windy, because then even these can't really help you that much. But for normal winter temperatures, perfect. And I think this was also a free pattern on Ravelry, so I'm going to link that below just in case you're interested. It, it does get better. Um, I don't knit like that anymore. I know how much yarn to order. So um, it does get better and more complicated, but for the first three projects, I think it's great. And a bit later for my birthday, which is also in winter, my husband got me a really nice set of Manus del Uruguay Silk Fino Minis. So these are little color coordinated mini skeins of wool. And I really wanted to make these into a shawl. So I found one of the free basic Ravelry shawl patterns because back in that time I was still in the in the mindset of, oh, where would I pay for a knitting pattern when there's so many free ones on Ravelry? Um, and I don't know anymore which basic pattern I used. I think it might have been Reina or one of the other basic free shawl patterns. I will link them below in case you also are curious about making one. And this is how it came out. I improvised quite a lot. So for example, um, with the, the lacy sections with the little eyelets here, I um, improvised with how many I wanted, how many rows of this and that. And it used up the full 100 grams that I had, but it's really nice. It's super soft. It's um, big enough to comfortably wear in autumn and winter. And I'm still super happy with the little tassels I made back then because I think they're super cute. It's gotten a lot of wear. It's really nice to just wrap yourself up in it when you're watching TV in the in the winter. Um, so yeah, this is uh, my first chore, I think, or second one. And after that, I was completely hooked because I was so happy with this. But then I looked up more and more complicated pattern and, and um, intricate patterns. And then I found the designer Bunetz and her lace shorts. And she has a pattern that's called Love in a Mist, which I made into this shawl here. So I wanted it to kind of look a bit like a galaxy. So I knit in lots and lots of little beads because, as I said earlier, I do like bead looming and bead work. Um, so I make use of the, the big silver beads that I have lying around at home. And I'll hold it closer to the camera so you can see. So it's basically, it's a galaxy. It's not accurate, um, but every little bead is a tiny star. And then it has the... The lace portion at the, the bottom, which is a super, super pretty design, I still think. It's uh, one of her easier patterns and um, I really like the, the geometric lace and in contrast to the, and how the beading is there in contrast to the galaxies where it's just like randomly placed beads. So yeah, I wore this one a lot as well and I still do. And in the meantime, there were lots of other things that I made that I started to give away um, hats and a shawl as well, I think, yeah. And for everyone who is watching who actually received one of these first hats from me, I want to apologize very deeply because um, I think some of them are quite ill-fitting because I didn't gauge swatch, I still mostly don't, but back then I definitely didn't and I think some of them were a bit on the on the short side so you would have like half of an ear poking out somewhere 
stuff like that that, that can definitely be avoided and shouldn't happen but back then stuck inside with the pandemic with no one to teach me and only youtube as a teacher yeah i'm i'm quite surprised that that i uh, got as far as i did but not to this on youtube because there's so many good tutorials on that that can really like teach you how to do things properly that um i don't know I, I probably wouldn't have been able to pick knitting back up if it hadn't been for youtube tutorials so when i started to knit again in 2020 i thought I'm never going to make a sweater. I'm not um, going to do that. It's way too much work. It's way too much hassle. I'm never going to be in the mood for that or do that whatsoever. It's not a thing. I'm going to do hats. And then I was like, and then I'm going to do shawls, but they're not that big. A sweater would still take far more wool. And then I saw some really nice color work sweaters on Ravelry. And then I was like, oh, maybe I do one sweater. But that also didn't keep for long and uh, I, I kind of got hooked on knitting sweaters as well. So for example, the one that I'm wearing, I made myself, this is the Althida sweater and I'm going to talk about it a bit more later in the podcast. Or for example, this one I made myself too. It's just fresh off the blocking mats and the, the ends are not fully woven in yet. This is the Astraea sweater by Megan Reagan or Bad Wolf Knits. Yeah. So that went from one hand warmer to full on collar work sweaters within the course of about a year, I think. So you see, I'm myself a relatively new knitter who has made quite significant progress re relatively fast. So for me, it's also really important that this is a space that's welcoming to knitters of all skill levels. If you're a beginner, welcome. I'll try to um, sometimes explain some things that I do so that it's easier to understand. I might elaborate a bit on the specific properties of the fibers that I'm using and things like that. And if you're an expert knitter, welcome to you as well, I hope. I don't bore you and there's definitely going to be quite a bit of lace knitting in here to keep you interested. So that's me in a nutshell basically. Um, apart from knitting I also have a few other fiber related hobbies of which you might see a bit on this podcast here and there. For example I do crochet badly. Um, I like to weave I like to embroider. I actually have a bit of embroidery here to show you, which is two berries that I made. So this is an autumn themed berry that I made, I think, two years ago. And this is an um, embroidered and needle felted berry that I made also about two years ago with some koi on it. So it's a little koi pond. So sometimes you will maybe see a bit of these hobbies in here as well. And I think I will here and there talk a bit about the books that I'm reading because that's quite a big part of my life as well. And I might also talk about music, stationery a little bit because those are some other interests of mine. But the main focus will always be on knitting. You might also here and there see me paint a little, watercolor, cook. Yeah, those are those are my main main hobbies. Um, and since I myself like to be very aware of the of the seasons of the year that are going on around me, I will always tie in the podcast to that as well in in, in one way or the other. So what can you actually expect from this podcast. So it's going to have the classic knitting podcast content, your finished objects, VIPs, the cast-ons and, and the acquisitions of yarn, which happen quite a lot in this household, I should admit. Um, 
Then what I also want to do is I want to spotlight some specific patterns or some yarns that I'm using that I especially like. I want to focus on patterns for different seasons of the year and I also want to give you some tips and tricks, especially if you're just starting out knitting. And as I already said, sometimes you might see a few sprinkles of my other hobbies here and there. So I would say, let's dive right in with the first finished object. So my first finished object is the El Theater sweater by Jennifer Stangas, which I'm wearing. It's a top-down collar work yoke sweater that's knit in a DK worsted weight. The wool that's recommended in the pattern is the Eastex Platulopi. And I think most of you will know it. It's an unspun, really woolly yarn. I decided that I wanted something that can go in the washing machine. So I went for a superwash DK weight yarn instead. And this is the Wild Atlantic Yarns Neum DK weight yarn. I think it's actually not necessarily recommended to put it in the washing machine, but at a without spin soft wash cycle, I've, I've been successful with this one. So as you can see, I went for a relatively low contrast yoke, but you can still recognize the pattern. It has these feathers up here and then these little spikes down there that go around the whole sweater. And I really enjoyed knitting this. So this was quite easy knit. Um, you really have to concentrate for the yoke, but after that it's just stocking it straight down and it has a bit of a unusual bind off seam down here, which I think you might be able to see. Yeah, so it, it's, um, I think if I remember correctly, it's one row per one row knit on the round needles, but it has this really kind of cozy looking finish to it because of it. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's super stretchy um, it sits quite loose on me and the same for for the sleeves so you can see they don't have the classic ribbing but instead they're a, a tiny bit different. So um, the yarn was an absolute dream to work with. This is so soft. Uh, I don't know if I have any yarn that beats it in, in, in terms of softness. It's super silky. This is half merino, I think. It's anyways half wool, half silk. And uh, it completely broke my wool budget for, I think, two months to get a sweater's quantity of this. But it was absolutely worth it. I'm completely in love with this colorway. It's called Winter Moor. I've never really seen anything like it before. I feel like it really has these more colors to it. It's, it's super reminiscent of, of, of heather to me. It reminds me of heather and, and all of the other plants that you can see in a, in a moor. And then you have these brownish spots that remind me of like bracken water. So it's, it's, it's super atmospheric. To be honest, all of Wild Atlantic yarns, yarns are super atmospheric with, the, with their theming and the, the names. Um, and as a contrasting color, I used the colorway Pumpkin Spice. It's up here. And you can see this is this like warm, bronze, shimmery uh, brown. So I feel in hindsight, I might have gone for something that was a bit higher contrast. But I'm actually really happy with how this turned out anyway. What else can I say about this? Um, the, the, the yarn is super stretchy when it gets wet, as Superwash tends to, to do. And I kind of underestimated this a bit for the sleeves, about how stretched out they would get. So um, I was quite careful to not put the weight of the sweater on it when I was 
taking it out of the washing machine where I soaked it. Um, so you kind of have to hold it like a newborn baby, I guess, and bundle it up so that it doesn't stretch because you just pulled it out on the sleeve or something. So I did that, but it still stretched quite a bit anyway. Um, in the end, I didn't mind what I did was I just flipped over. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I just flipped over the top of the sleeve and then sewed it. So it's double sleeve here, which is super practical. Um, could I have avoided this completely by swatching? Yes. Did I swatch? No. Um, will I swatch? Maybe. Probably not. Probably only if I um, um, I want to go for a, a form-fitting garment, then I would. So one thing that I really want to knit at some point is the Nightingale sweater by Nora Gorn. And for that, I would for that I would put a swatch in for sure. But uh, if I don't mind if a if a garment is oversized a bit or undersized, because I have a younger sibling who is a bit smaller than me, so anything that comes out a bit small for me, I can just give to her. So uh, that's perfect. In that case, I don't swatch. And. I would recommend you do, definitely. So uh, do as I say, don't do as I do. But I, I, I have to admit that even for sweaters, I usually don't. But yeah, so that's it um, for the sweater. I think I'm going to put a few clips of it in so you can see the color work in a bit more detail. And yeah, I can really recommend the pattern. I can really recommend the yarn as well. finished object of this episode is also a sweater and it's the Astraea sweater by Megan Regan who is also on YouTube and has a knitting podcast and she's called Bat Wolf Knits on here. So I say this is a finished object but if I'm perfectly honest with you then you can see that I still have to weave in some ends here and there but it's it's finished it's washed it's blocked always block your color work it's really important otherwise it will look all bunched up and i am perfectly in love with this it's so halloweeny and um wintry and kind of reminds me of something that a mage would wear in a weird way so yes this is this is awesome. I'm, 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 I'm smitten. This is another, I'm starting to see a pattern here. This is another top-down collar work sweater. Um, but here the collar work is not only on the, on the yoke, but it's going down the sleeves as well. So about halfway of the sleeves. And um, also she has this pattern which she calls starfall on the body as well so you have way more color work going on here and on top of that you also have some optional beading so I'll show you this here I hope you can see you can see that there's some now I'm muffled um you can see that there's some blue beads that I've knitted in here in the middle of the stars and she explains to you how how to do this as well how to slip it over but yeah this is um, originally I think it's a bit more cropped than what I did I went full length with it and the same for the sleeves I saw that most people finish them 
around here but I kind of when when I knit a relatively thick sweater I want it to be like up to my wrists because otherwise I'm really warm here and really not here and also I tend to wear these um, long sleeves under my jumpers so I don't like them poking out that much what else can I say about this pattern? So I really liked it. I thought it was relatively clear. Um, I think there was a tiny mistake, but it might have been me. So when I doubt it's usually me, there might have been a tiny mistake with the numbers of stitches to pick up <clears throat> in pattern under the arms. So as you can see, the pattern of collar work also goes under here. Um, and I felt like the instructions are more suited for people who have already knit one or two color work sweaters. So I didn't struggle at all with it. But if you're doing your very first color work knit sweater, then I would maybe go for a more basic pattern to start with. Especially because if you just do color work yoke, then you don't have to deal with color work on the arms, which is a bit more difficult. But if you maybe knit one or two color work sweaters and you're feeling adventurous, you're feeling up to it, then I would say definitely go for it because this is just so pretty. Um, I'm going to wear this everywhere. Regarding the yarn I used for this, I used Dererum Natura Gilead. And this is a worsted weight yarn. Um, it's 100% merino wool. It's really springy. Um, since it's not super wash, it didn't stretch at all in the wash. But what I found with most color work, and especially with Gilead, because I also have knit some color work hats in it before, is that you really need to wash it to get the, the, the best look out of it. So regarding the yarn, um, I used four skeins of Gilead in the color Belaine Blue, which I think means blue whale, which is very cute, and two skeins um, of the color Doré, which I think means golden. So this is how much I have left over. So I used just a, more than one skein of the gold um, and about three and a half skeins of the blue. So um, don't know what I'll do with the rest I think I might make a matching hat because that would be very cute I think in the pattern for Astraeus Megan also has included instructions for a little cow so you might be able and instructions for a baby sweater which is also super cute it's called moonbeam um, so you might be able to improvise a hat from that I think I will try that uh, I'll, I'll keep you updated because this is too pretty to not use it and I have one full skein um, of Gilead that I bought in another color because I thought I might make some hats for Christmas and a lot of people love beige. So um, that seems like a, a good thing to already preemptively buy. Um, and judging from the label, this is, yes, a French merino wool. It's 250 meters per 100 gram. And the recommended needle size is four to five millimeters. That's the Australia sweater and I think I might like put in a few more pictures in, in one of the future episodes when I had the opportunity to take a few nicer pictures of it. And then I have a third finished object for this episode and this is literally tiny. This is the a, a little newborn pumpkin hat it's not been blocked yet that's why it's so tiny but sad um it's it's uh, for a newborn baby because i have reached the age where suddenly everyone around me is having babies and then i get to knit stuff for them and i get to play with them when they're in a good mood and then when when they're cranky or tired the parents take them away and I can lean back in my armchair and read a good book. So that's perfect. Um, so this is a, a, a hat I made for one of the newborns. I have to make three more hats of these because I'm, I'm making them for, for four actually, I think. Yeah, 
for all of the babies that have uh, recently appeared out of nowhere in my close environment. So yeah, this is the baby pumpkin hat and it's based on the baby berry hat free pattern on Ravelry, which I will link below as well, um, by Michel Sabatier. I have seen several other people who have made these berries into little pumpkins. Um, they have linked their projects are quite highly rated in the, in the project view on Ravelry, so you will have no difficulty finding them. Um, something that I've done that I think really helps with the pumpkin look is that I the, the total number of stitches can be divided by eight and I've done a knit seven per one pattern repeat so that creates these little pumpkin-y ridges and uh, the little stem up here is a little i-cord stem and I've sometimes slipped a stitch so it would kind of twist a little bit like a pumpkin stem does. So this is the first one of the series um, and I'm already starting on number two which is here You'll notice this one is a bit bigger. This is because this is for an older sibling of one of the babies. Um, because I remember how it was to be an older sibling and then everyone shows up and fawns over the baby. So I want the the, the older older one to also have one so they can go in partner look, I guess. And yeah, this is as I said, Malabrigo Rios in the color Sunset um, for the, the main body and lettuce, lettuce, lettuce for the, for the top. But I'm also going to be using the color Glazed Carrot for one of the other hats. Um, so I think I will show that to you in a future episode, how it came out and then you can decide which one was the more pumpkin-y colorway. So yeah, that's that for the finished object. So I would say let's move over briefly to the works in progress, which are not so many at the moment since the Astraeus is now finished. And I already showed you the pumpkin baby hat, so there's no need to go into that any longer. What I also have is basically the last of my summon. It's because I got a bit way late by getting distracted with the Astraeus. Um, I thought I would finish this way, way earlier than I am now doing, so don't judge me. Um, so here we have a shawl beginning of a shawl and it's the beginning of the heaven sent pattern by Boonet. This is a crescent shawl um, which you can I guess you can kind of see that. So here you go and um, it's basically a, a stockinette stitch body where you increase at the at the edges of each row and I got a bit burned out on the stockinette as I tend to do same when I'm knitting sweaters and then there was something new and shiny to do the stress and before that another sweater so this got put to the back of the queue twice but now I really want to finish it because I don't actually like knitting with pure silk that much in winter it's more of a, of a summer yarn for me in the lace section i will put beads in um which brings us over to the acquisitions part of the podcast because i have purchased some beads to put on this shawl. I might in the end decide on a different color, but this is what I'm going to go for for now. So here are my beads. And these are Toho seed beads um, in the 8.0 size. So these are a really similar shade to 
the yarn. I think it will go well together. Um, the color is called Rainbow Light Sapphire, so I think that fits. Um, it's a size 8.0, so it should be big enough for a small crochet hook because it's also really important. And I tend to go for these Toho beads because they're super symmetrical. So um, they're a better quality than a lot of other beads or like rosais as we call them um, because they're cut more evenly. So um, with other beads, I often have the issue that the crochet hook fits for like a third of the beads in the package, but for the rest, it's too big because the holes are not even. So it can sometimes really be worth investing into these nicer beads if you wanted to be the knitting because it saves you a lot of heartache. Um, and it's also, it's just so frustrating if you're just like beading with this fiddly little hook and then you get stuck and then you have to try to disentangle it without it ripping your yarn, which can happen. So especially if you have like a, a lace weight yarn, you want to be super careful with that. So it can be really like worth it getting a bit better beads that don't get stuck anywhere because otherwise, yeah, it's, it's just it's just frustrating. It's just tiring. Don't do it um, because also it doesn't really make so much of a difference um, in, in price on the end. If you can't use two thirds of the package, you might as well just buy better beads that are half again as expensive or something like that. So um, you still come out with more usable beads in the end. So these is these are um, the 8.0 size and that's kind of the smallest size I would be using. Um, Focuses. Come on, I know I'm not helping by moving, but yes, there we go. So yeah, you can see them. So I got these, and of course, um, I did not stop there. I got more. Um, also, because it's it's still really early to say this, but Christmas is coming. Uh, the season is upon us, so if if you if you plan to to knit stuff for people, then of course you start thinking about what you will do quite early on. And I'm going to keep this spoiler free because I suspect my supporting, loving friends and family will actually look at this video. Um, so I'm just gonna keep it super general, but. In future videos, I will get more into detail and I will just put a spoiler warning for the people who really shouldn't watch that part of the video, I think. But for now, what I also got were these golden beads. They're um, a bit bigger. Um, they're called Crystal Gold Aligned Machubu Seed Beads and they're in size 6.0. I got two packets of this because as I told you the bigger beads tend to get used up super quickly so don't buy too little of those and then I got something that's super similar which is the same Matuba seed beads but in copper so I can see that going really well with like a, a rusty red for example yarn and what I also got were more Toho seed beads um, an 8.0 again. I got them off Etsy, by the way, just in case you're also looking for stuff. Etsy is usually quite a good place to find these because um, often you're looking for kind of a specific color, so worth worth checking out Etsy. Um, and I got these kind of burgundy, wine-colored, dark red, purpley ones, which I'm also really excited about and I'm sure I will find a good use for them, which I will for now not elaborate on further. Another recent acquisition is this sweater quantity of Malabrigo Rios in Plomo. So it's this dark grey but it's 
can't stop putting my face on the wall, it's so soft. Um, it's this dark grey, but it's kind of variegated, a tiny bit. Um, so it, it's, it's a bit moody and that's actually for me. Uh, because I've wanted a moody grey sweater for a very long time because I tend to wear mostly like dark colours, black, grey, things like that, neutrals. So a grey sweater will get a lot of wear out of it. For now I'm not super sure which pattern I will do. I'm kind of torn between Bloomsbury which I've seen done in my Labrigo Rios a lot and it's really pretty. It's this like sweater that has a lacy back and lacy sleeves. Um, I've seen mods that do it all over lace. I think that would get me out of my uh, color work sweater after the yoke. It's kind of boring rut a bit because it keeps interesting for the, for the whole pattern. Um, other alternative I'm thinking about is the Weekender, but there I've seen people do it with uh, a few different shades of the Rios and, and kind of faded and it's gorgeous, gorgeous. I think I'm, I'm more tempted to do that if I do it and then why did I buy a sweater quantity of Plomo? So I think it will be the Bloomsbury in the end. And I have uh, two other recent acquisitions because I went to my hometown recently and there's this little wool store that's only open for three hours on days with a full moon not quite but but it's quite similar it's like open on tuesdays for three hours or something like that it's really weird opening times but um the stars alliance and the wool store was open and it's it's a super cute store i really like going there um and i picked up i always pick something up when i go there i picked up this cone of ito shio I have never knit with this yarn at all. It's 100% wool, it's 480 meters for 40 grams, so it's a thin lace weight. Um, and it's this lovely burgundy color. I think we're seeing a kind of burgundy pattern here. Um, and I want to knit a shawl with it, held with Lino Mucca. So Lino Muka I have knit with before. This is a 100% linen yarn from Woolen Berlin. And I can really, really recommend this. I love this yarn. So it is a very, I think I have different skein lying around ball because I wound it on this table somewhere. I found it, it had fallen down, um, which really is not such a surprise. So, um, this is a, a ball of the Lino Muka that I wound when I knit a shawl made out of it for my mom. It was a, a Mother's Day shawl for her and it's this 100% linen. So it's, as you can kind of see from how the thread moves, it's super, super, super stiff. It feels like it would be kind of uncomfortable if you wear it, but this is completely normal for pure linen um, and it softens both when you knit it because your hands kind of break up the fibers a bit more I think um, and when you wash it and the good thing about linen yarn is that it's super durable it's super 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 sturdy so I was knitting this super light um, Mother's Day shawl for her I think I'm gonna put a picture in yep so you can see it it's the out of Darkness by Bunetz as well. It's a beaded shawl. I really like the beads on the linen because it gave it more drape, it gave it more heaviness because the shawl was really light in itself. I bought a lot more of this than I actually needed. I bought um, three, three little skeins of it and uh, each skein is 245 meters. So I would have needed two according to the pattern but I only actually ended up needing one and a half um, so I still have one and a half left and I could make a second shawl out of it or whatever I want to um, so this is 
going to feel really strange when you when you pick it up for the first time if you've only ever knit with woolly wools or with silk or or any other fibers but this is going to soften up beautifully it's gonna bloom when you wash it quite a bit and it ended up this super light super pretty shawl that she can wear in summer just wrapped around her shoulders because linen also is cooling um, and it doesn't make you feel warmer but uh, it doesn't have any like sun protection qualities per se but it still kind of helps to keep the sun a bit off your shoulders still wear sunscreen but it helps to keep the sun a bit away um, if you wear it and it also helps when it's like drafty in summer um, to, to kind of keep the draft away a little bit. And I was really curious about how this would play held together with wool for maybe spring or early autumn. Um, I don't know if I'll still get it done this autumn or if I'll do it next spring when it comes around, but at some point I'm going to, to knit this double held shawl maybe with the, with the burgundy beads that I got. So yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to that a lot. And linen, Lino Muka, perfect, love it. So I have to admit that when I started talking, I was really worried about not being able to fill five minutes, but I shouldn't have worried about it because I tend to blabber and I know that. So I think we're, we're good time lengthwise for now, I hope. And I wanted to say goodbye to you and i look forward to seeing you again in the next episode if you like this one then please don't forget to like and subscribe you can also find me on instagram i'm also called down the forest path there and you will see my knitting progress i put some polls here and there and also um, a lot of my embroideries are on there so i look forward to seeing you on instagram as well and let me know what you think in the comments and also if you have any ideas for a nice cable basic head pattern for my Gilead and knitting for all of silk, silk, silk mohair combo that would be very much appreciated. I think I will be putting these out every two weeks. Um, I think that's that's about a, a nice amount of time where I will be able to show you some progress on stuff but it's not a whole month in between episodes but we will see how it goes and i'm looking forward to to seeing you again and to hearing from you in the comments bye